talk about um, bringing Miller's ice time down this season, does that mean that you're looking at putting Patterson into the middle, or is it too early to uh, make a comment on that? I think that's something we are uh, discussing with uh, Bruce and his uh, coaching staff here. Uh, by adding those extra forwards, I think uh, they give uh, the coaching staff a lot of options. Uh, and I think we're a deeper team, um, want to create more internal competition. So uh, definitely we have more players that can play different positions. Patrick, two weeks out from training camp, is there clarity on Dr. Poolman at this point and his health and ability? and? Yeah, all the indication that I have uh, from our medical staff uh, is that Tucker is doing really well. Um, uh, as of now, uh, I anticipate him to uh, be on the ice on day one of training camp here. Do you expect to enter the season with essentially the defense group that you have right now? I guess you never know. Uh, we're still looking at all our options. and. Uh, uh, I'm happy with the, with, the, with the defense group we have. I think uh, when everybody's healthy, I think we're uh, a, a very uh, competitive team. JT spoke about having a lot of confidence in the upper management group yourself and Jim with the past that you guys have winning cups. I guess looking at the investment that you just made in JT Miller, how much is this Canucks team now moving into like a win now mode or do you think there's a lot of work to do to get to that point? Well, I think uh, to, there is a lot of work. Uh, I don't think you just uh, go from being a non-playoff team to be a Stanley Cup winner. I think this is a process over time that uh, I think in today's game you want to be, our goal is to be a, a very competitive t competitive team over time. And, and by being that, we need to make a big step this year. And, and, uh, and I believe that the players are uh, prepared and their mindset is that uh, they're ready to come in here for day one training camp. Can you compare the current blue line to maybe some of the blue lines you had success with in Pittsburgh? Because I know that the feeling is that you know they had Latang and then you know some some players that were kind of in the middle of the pack. Do you see things the same way here? Yeah, I I, I think uh, you know it, it's hard to compare from team to teams, but but when in Pittsburgh you had uh, a lot of good forwards, so. Um, in order for, for the team to be successful, they, you, you want to get the puck up ice quickly. And I think here, uh, by adding the forwards we did this summer, I think we are a deeper team, we have more options, and, and if we can have um, the puck coming up or our own end quicker and, and spend more time in, in the uh, offensive zone, I think we will be a better team. You know, JT noted that talks really heated up last weekend. Was there a change in thinking? At the, at the organizational level about the urgency of getting the deal done now? I wouldn't say an urgency. I think, uh, as I said before, like every discussions have their own path. And, uh, and again, uh, a deal like this, it takes time. Uh, you want to look uh, and make sure you have, uh, um, you know, um, all, the, all the options uh, for this year and moving forward uh, when you're committing to uh, uh, a seven-year uh, contract extension like this noted that it was difficult to move money uh, this summer. Um, you've made a fair few long-term commitments to, to forwards over the course of this summer. Uh, how much did you weight uh, sort of the difficulty of moving future cap space in deciding to upgrade this roster for the short term? Yeah, I, I think we that's that's where we took our time to uh, make sure our options, uh, where, where the options were around the league. And, uh, and, and as I said, I, I think it's important for us to just not be good here this season. Uh, we want to make sure we have a competitive team over time here. Our first um, formal Canucks event this year will be the Young Stars in Penticton next week. Is there um, anybody that you can pinpoint that we should be watching for especially? Well, I'm excited to watch those players as well. And, and uh, it's been tough for them uh, not uh, having the opportunity to uh, showcase himself here in the last couple of years. But I do think we have some, some young players coming in here and, and are eager to show uh, the coaching staff and the management that they're ready to fight for, uh, for uh, games uh, the upcoming year. We haven't talked about him too much, but adding Jeremy Colleton, what was the focus there? What, what stood out about him as being the guy that you wanted to put in that Well, I think I personally, I watched um, Jeremy um, since he started his coaching career in Sweden. But uh, in general, I think it's important for us to bring in uh, quality people here uh, in every position. Um, and when we had the opportunity to get a 
you know, a guy that's still young, that had the experience of coaching in the NHL as a head coach, um, can teach and, and work with our younger players, I think it's important. It looks like your team in Abbotsford is going to be a little bit younger this year than perhaps it was in its inaugural season. Uh, did that make Jeremy a more attractive fit from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's important for us to uh, continue to push and educate the younger players. And I said it uh, many times, it's it's not a sprint for them to get one game. Uh, it's it's on our staff, the coaching staff in Abbotsford and our development staff to, to, to educate them and, and uh, prepare them for being uh, full-time NHL players. So that might be, you know, some of them might need a year, some of them might need three years, uh, but it's it's just to stay uh, the path and stay focused and work with them. And in terms of going younger in Abbotsford, was there an organizational decision that you wanted it to be perhaps more of a learning environment um, under your watch? Well, I think it was important for us to uh, add some some younger prospects and by doing that I think it's it's also important to have uh, older uh, veteran leadership down in the American League to kind of show them, the young players, uh, what it takes to become an NHL player just the day-to-day -day stuff and the grind and the mental part of, of being a full-time NHL player. And on, last on one on UT for me anyway, is uh, with these long-term deals, eight-year deals for a player who's going to be 30 in, in the first year, we know that the front end of the deal tends to be a, a little bit more economical from a team's perspective than the back end. What was it about where this team's positioned today that made this the right move for your club in your view? Well, I think uh, first uh, credit to the uh, the ownership here that that made the commitment and the um, sacrifice here to to make this deal um, come along. Uh, as you said, I think we we you know looking around the league what it takes to get uh, players that would would. Uh, JT's uh, dignity and and uh, contract like this, um, uh, you obviously have to work with the with the player side to to uh, get it structured so it works for both sides there.